Ready to go live. We're on? Yes. All right. The call is hearing to order. Good evening. My name is Craig Pettit, and I will chair, I will be your chairman for today's hearing. I would like to introduce the other members of the Land Division Committee, Vice Chair Pat Kennedy, Liz Danielson, and Bill Blakes. The purpose of this hearing is to give the applicant or authorized agent the opportunity to discuss their application with the committee and to respond to the written submissions which have been received. It is also an opportunity for the committee to broaden our understanding of the application by asking questions. Members of the public who are virtual today may also make oral submissions to the committee and ask questions of the staff. The procedure we use in this hearing is to deal with the applications which are to be heard in the same order as they were received in our office. When you hear the name and number read out of the application of an interest in, that will bring you into the meeting as a virtual participant. After your application has been dealt with, staff will exit you from the virtual meeting and you are able to stay and listen to the remainder of the hearing. We'll now proceed with the agenda for this evening's meeting. Additions to the agenda? There are none. Thank you. Declarations of interest? None. Okay. No, no. no. Adoption of the minutes. <clears throat> Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? No, move it, Bill. Second, Pat. Thank you. Moved by Bill Blake, second by Pat Kennedy. Be it resolved that the minutes of the Land Division Committee meeting held July the 20th, 2020, be hereby approved as printed and circulated. All in favor? Uh, could I just have a point of order, please? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm sorry to ask this question, but uh, just for the purposes of the minutes, is the vice chair, Mr. Kennedy, or myself? Pat Kennedy, according to what's in front of me, uh, because I think at the last meeting um, I was introduced as the vice chair, and 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 now I'm confused. It, it doesn't matter to me, but I think that uh, you know we had at one point must have passed a, a resolution to that effect. You would have, and I will go back and make sure both records are corrected. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Aye. I will now ask our Secretary of Treasurer, Lisa Gillen, to take us through the agenda, if you would please, Lisa. Okay, first we have item 6.1, which is file H-010 of 20. The applicant is Harbor and Holdings Limited. Location of the property is Lot 6, Plan 19M12, Geographic Township of Harbor, now in the municipality of Dysart et al. The purpose of the application is to grant an easement for right-of-way. So this proposal, uh, as Lisa said, the application is to grant or sever a 10 meter strip of land, uh, about 0 0.05 hectares in size for the purpose of access across a recently created lot in a plan of subdivision. Um, the applicant is not uh, available uh, virtually for this. Um, we've seen a number of these. This one is also on Percy Lake, so we're familiar with the area. And um, due to topography, usually uh, we see some of these rights of ways just to make sure that the driveways are, are in place properly. Uh, the, the county, from a planning perspective, has no concerns or um, issues with the application. Any questions or comments from the committee members? Uh, Bill? Go ahead, Bill. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, no, just looking at municipal and agency comments. Did Dysart have any comments on it? No, they uh, they hadn't taken it to their council yet, um, and they didn't do pre consultation because it's not required for an easement. Okay, that's good. And I believe uh, this one. Dysart, uh, the director of planning there, Jeff, had mentioned just to use the standard conditions that they had for previous applications uh, in this area. So that's exactly what we did. Okay. Excellent. All right. We have a motion, application H-010 
10 for 20. The decision is that provisional consent be granted. All in favor? Liz Aye. Aye. Yep, okay, thank you. <laughs> Carried. Okay, Lisa. Okay, next we have item 6.2, application H-011 of 20. The applicant is 2139353 Ontario, Inc. Um, location of the property is part of lot 15, concession five, geographic township of Lutterworth, now in the township of Minden Hills. Purpose of the application is to permit a lot addition to abutting lands, but I'll just mention that um, the applicant who I listed was the original applicant. However, ownership of the land has been transferred. Um, it is now in the name of, I'm just trying to find it. Um, I believe it was referenced. That uh, Michael Collins and Peggy McNamara? Yes, thank you. And we have authorization from the lawyer here um, for the application to continue to move forward. Okay, so this application proposes to sever 0.62 hectare parcel of rural vacant land for the purpose of a lot addition to an adjacent property. Uh, both the benefiting and retained lands are developed with dwelling and the accessory structures. The subject lands are waterfront adjacent to Clear Lake. Uh, Clear Lake is not a lake trout lake and no new lot is going to be created as a result of the application for a lot addition. And the applicant is not in attendance. All right, uh, questions or comments from the committee? Uh, just one comment. It looks like a, uh, a really good thing to do to, uh, to sort of make that uh, one, the southern lot more standard in size. Yeah. All right. So we have a motion for H11 over 20. The decision is that provisional consent be granted. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, we have item 6.3, application H-012 of 20. The applicant is Stan Novak. Location of the property is lot 39, plan 492, geographic township of Guilford, now in the municipality of Dysart at all. The purpose of the application is to permit a lot addition to abutting lands. So I'll give a brief summary and then the agent for the applicant is available should there be any questions or she want to provide additional information. Uh, so this application is a small lot addition between two properties to correct an encroachment by a deck uh, between the two neighboring properties. Uh, it is noted that the both the severed retained and benefiting lands are on Eagle Lake, which is a uh, lake trout lake that's determined to be at capacity. However, uh, no new lots are being created. This is really just to correct um, an encroachment issue. So uh, from a planning perspective, uh, we support the application. All right, uh, anything you'd like to add to that, Kim? Um, no, actually, it's it's a very straightforward application. Um, if you look at the sketch, actually, so this is a recent, uh, the committee saw this, I believe, in 2018, um, but it unfortunately lapsed due to some circumstances beyond everyone's control. Um, there was, the deck that was there previously was actually larger, um, and they've reconstructed the, the deck at a smaller dimension, um, but the lot addition is still required because there's actually some driveway occupying that area as well, just if anybody was looking at the sketch and realized that the deck isn't actually over into the severed lands. Um, it doesn't meet setback currently, but there is a driveway there as well. Um, otherwise, we've reviewed the conditions, everything seems straightforward, so I'm happy to answer any questions, but otherwise, yeah, we're good. Any I have a question. Um, I just was wondering about the uh, uh, the deck on what appears to be the shore road allowance. Looks like it's even closer to the property line than the than the deck that that the uh, addition is being added. Um, I'm just wondering why that wasn't included. Why the uh, the severed parcel didn't go right down? If we have to. Um, sever a parcel for a deck, why not both decks? So um, this was kind of the agreement that the neighbors had come to in terms of trying to resolve this. Um, the driveway was a large um, driver here as well. And the municipal conditions require that actually both applicants require um, 
sorry, apply for planning relief. Um, in the case of the benefiting lands, they're going to need a minor variance to legalize anything that's too close to the lot line. Um, but yeah, in terms of the negotiations between the two parties, um, this was the shift in the envelope that was settled upon. And if I could add information, yes, as Kim says, conditions seven and eight on our report for H01220 addresses those minor variances. Also, that deck, um, member uh, Danielson, you're speaking to, appears to be entirely on a municipal shore road allowance. So, I mean, the municipality could do with it what they what they wish as well. So, um, hopefully, that answers your question. Yep. Okay. Any other questions or comments? No, no. Kim, you're good with the conditions? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. We have a decision, application H12420. The decision is that provisional consent be granted. All in favor? Aye. Right. Aye. Right. And I will leave Kim as a participant as she represents the next file as well. Okay. Please, okay. So next we have item 6.4, which is file H-013 of 20. The applicant is the estate of Ronald and Harriet Eckler. Location of the property is part of lot 24 and 25, concession two, geographic township of McClintock, now in the township of Algonquin Highlands. The purpose of the application is to create a new lot together with an easement for driveway purposes. So this application uh, is proposing to sever 3.86 hectares uh, of vacant land for resource-based recreational purpose. And that's coming from an existing 5.72 hectare parcel of land that's developed already with the resource-based recreational use, so cottage. It is significant to note that the subject land is at the very tip of a large peninsula on Kawagma Lake and forms and narrows with a peninsula on the other side. The narrows between the two ends uh, are approximately 75 meters in width. The subject land is located on Quagma Lake, which is a lake trout lake, but is not identified to be at capacity. And the proposed lot and the proposed sever, severed and retained are to be water access only. So I know there were certain comments from the members of the public with regards to um, a Crown Land Road and where it crosses private land, but the basis of this application at this time is for water access. All right, thank you. Kim? Sure. Um, there were a number of public comments on this application. Uh, the overview is, is pretty straightforward. Um, this has always been a water access lot for as long as the Eckler family has owned it, and they've owned it for many, many years. Um, so the intention is to create another water access lot um, together with a right of way to provide access back to the Crown land. There's a very large swath of Crown land behind the peninsula. Um, that does have trails that can be accessed. Um, so with regard to the road, um, the prospective purchaser for this property um, is interested in, in potentially working through a, a Crown Lake work permit process to have secondary access across um, coming off of West Clark Trail. Um, again, the lot is being created as a water access lot. The conditions require that there be adequate docking and parking for this lot. Um, but this is something sort of from the Crown Land perspective that the a prospective purchaser is sort of working on, working through discussing it with the Ministry of Natural Resources and other property owners. Um, but we are not proposing or looking for any other easements over any other private property to get anywhere with this application. Um, the other concern that came up was a snowmobile trail. Um, so I did get an opportunity to talk to a, a local on Kuagama Lake who lives in that area and is fam very familiar with the property. Um, and he said actually that generally the, the well-worn trail for the snowmobile coming through that uh, point and kind of through the narrows there is actually on the other side, on the other lot in lot 25. Um, he says that normally snowmobiles don't travel over the Eckler lot or the shore road lot right in front of it. Um, we have completed a shore road allowance survey as it was going to be a condition of consent and they can take quite a bit of time to work their way through. Um, and the majority of the shore road allowance, that 66 foot road allowance around the tip of the point of the retained land is actually underwater. Um, so again, I don't know that there are any concerns on the, um, from the property owners in terms of if people were crossing the snowmobiles or anything like that. Um, but I'm not certain that 
that location is necessarily where that snowmobile is crossing. I don't snowmobile on Quagamo Lake, um, but I did speak to somebody who uses those trails fairly regularly. And they stated that it was on the other side, which the Ecklers previously used to own. They actually used to own the, the property on the other side of the, the Narrows as well. So um, otherwise, these are the two, we're gonna have two nice big lots here um, with plenty of frontage, plenty of acreage, uh, docking and parking is not a concern as there are two um, marinas on Quagamo Lake, um, although one is going through a tra transition at the moment. And I'm happy to answer any questions that the committee may have. Okay. Any questions or comments? Liz? Uh, yeah, sorry, I still have a question. I, I'm not, I'm just not clear on the uh, on the requirement for the easement. It's it's strictly to get from the retained parcel through to trails. Back to Crown, yes. Back to the Crown land. The so property owners that with their cottage on, on point lot to, to be able to access the Crown through a trail in that location. Um, and so they are just wanting to maintain that kind of trail location back out to the Crown land. Okay. Sorry, it's Bill here. Um, lot 23, is that Crown land? Yes. Yes. Okay. And so it would be granting that whomever purchases or becomes the owner of the lot to be retained, the ability to cross the to be severed to get to those trails. Okay. All right, any other questions? All right, Lisa, would you mind reading the conditions on this one, please? Someone must have for the consent. So condition one would be the requirement for a hard copy and digital copy of an acceptable reference plan. Um, conveying the severed lands submitted to the secretary treasurer and our GIS technologist. Um, second is an undertaking from the applicant solicitor confirming that the deeds will be registered on title within two years from the date on the certificate. Condition three would be that the registered owner um, ensure all taxes are paid to the local municipality. Condition four, the registered owner will obtain an amendment to the comprehensive zoning bylaw for the severed and retained parcels to the satisfaction of the Township of Algonquin Highlands. Number five, a copy of all reference plans will be submitted to the planner for Algonquin Highlands prior to uh, registration. Condition six, the registered owner shall provide a 5% parkland dedication or cash in lieu in the amount of $1,000 for the severed parcel to the Township of Algonquin Highlands. Condition seven, the registered owner shall submit to the satisfaction of the County of Halliburton and the Township of Algonquin Highlands an updated site development plan prepared by an Ontario land surveyor, which includes indicating the proposed septic leaching bed mantle, the primary and secondary location outside of the required 30 meter setback from the shoreline high water mark. Um, sh it shall also show the proposed lot, identify the proposed docking envelope and all buildings and structures, main and accessory within the required setback areas and be based upon any other recommendations of the site evaluation report and peer review. Um, a copy of the plan once approved by the county and the township shall be provided to the land division committee for its records. Uh, number eight, the registered owner shall enter into a severance agreement um, to address all planning matters included but not limited to any recommendations of the peer review by Greer Galloway, as well as the Riverstone environmental site evaluation report and the site development plan. Number nine, the registered owner shall ensure the shore road allowance is stopped up and closed for both retained and severed parcels. Number 10, the registered owner shall provide to the satisfaction of the planner of the Township of Algonquin Highlands written confirmation of long-term arrangements for parking and boat docking to service the lands. Um, if access is from a public site, a copy of the agreement is required. If access is from a private site held in other ownership, a copy of the deed. If access is from a private site held wholly or in part by the applicant. Number 11, prior to endorsement of the deeds, the secretary treasurer shall receive a clearance letter from the Township of Algonquin Highlands confirming that its requested conditions have been met. Thank you. All right, uh, you're good with the conditions, Kim? Yes, we reviewed them and we're satisfied with those conditions. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the committee regarding conditions? Okay. No. 
No. All right, thank you. We have a decision, application H13420. The decision is that provisional consent be granted. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you. So now we have item 6.5 which is application H-014 of 20. The applicant is Cynthia Pun. Location of the property is part of lot 11 and 12, concession A, geographic township of Sherborne, now in the township of Algonquin Highlands. The purpose of the application is to permit a lot addition to abutting lands. So again, this application, um, it proposes to sever a really small portion of land. It's two meters by approximately five meters in size. So it's a polygon on the property line for a lot addition to again, correct an encroachment from a neighboring uh, structure on, on a neighboring property. The land to be retained is 0 0.2 hectares in size and is developed with resource-based recreational use or cottage and accessory buildings. The benefiting lands are also developed with resource-based recreational. The retained and the benefiting lands are located on Wren Lake in the township of Algonquin Highlands and Wren Lake is not an identified Lake Trout Lake. The applicant, I do not see um, as a participant. Any questions or comments from the committee? Mm -hmm. All right, we have a decision. Application H14420. The decision is that provisional consent be granted. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. So then we have item 6.6, .6, which is file H-015 of 20. The applicant is Lauren Heiss. Location of the property is part of lot three, concession two, geographic township of Stanhope, now in the township of Algonquin Highlands. And the purpose of the application is to permit a lot addition to abutting lands. And I brought uh, Ms. Roberts back in as she is the agent for this application. Uh, the application proposes to sever zero point a uh, two hectare parcel of vacant land for the purpose of a lot addition to adjacent lands. Um, the benefiting lands are developed with a dwelling and the retained land and benefiting land are both, both adjacent to Kushog Lake in the township of Algonquin Highlands. Uh, Kushog is identified as an at capacity lake trout lake. However, no new lot is being created. This is simply for a lot addition. Um, and the purpose of this application, uh, it may look familiar to the members of the committee. Uh, about a year ago or a year and a half ago, we corrected a road in this area where the road was on private land and the municipality and some private owners did a swap. So now this is one of those properties coming back to allow for the creation or the development of a garage, I believe, at this location. All right, Kim. I think Charles, he covered it. It's very straightforward. Mr. Heiss wishes to need a small rectangular ish uh, portion of his property um, to Mr. Kaminsky, who is his neighbor to the south, uh, so that Mr. Kaminsky can build a garage. Um, I have reviewed the conditions and I have no questions or concerns with them. So I'm happy to answer any questions the committee might have. Questions or comments from the committee members? No. No. Right, we have a motion. Application H15 or 20. The decision is that provisional consent be granted. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you, Kim. Uh, next on the agenda, we have correspondence. There is none. Pardon me? There is none. Okay. Uh, we have a motion for statistics report. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? We so move. Liz. Thank you. Moved by Liz Daniels and second by Pat Kennedy be resolved that the Land Division Committee received the following reports for information purposes. 8.1 statistics, July 2020. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any questions or comments? 
Uh, one, one quick one. Um, I see that, that we are listed as having seven participants in the meeting, but there have only been six of us. Just. Um, oh, so I do see there is now a participant. Would you like me to allow them into the meeting? They were not there before. Oh, so that's just somebody listening in on the meeting and, and for information, or is it someone who- so we, we did, thank you for pointing that out. We had two other people who tried to participate. And if I look at this number, this is for applicant H011 of 20 based on the phone number, which has already had a decision on. So I guess it would be to the chair, should I allow them in um, after the fact? It's an order of procedure really. Uh, yeah, I just looking that was a lot of addition to abutting lands. Uh, well, the application, the decision is already ready to be made. Uh, if we want to entertain them, just in the event of something to, to clarify. But, uh, it's up to you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, well, the decision was made to approve the application. Yeah. Um, so. so I think given that uh, we've already dealt with the application, there is opportunity for them to contact this office if they have any questions or that they would need clarification on. So I think we'll continue on with our agenda. Thank you very much. And they can continue to listen and it is a phone call in. So um, thank you for identifying that number, Danielson. You're welcome. Uh, agenda. Do we we're on number nine and there is no close to that. Okay, I got back here. <laughs> All right, no other business. Uh, our next committee meeting uh, is likely going to be in November based on the applications and where they are in the processing cycle. Okay. So, not in October. So, um, okay. and there's Thanksgiving in October. So, it would be a late meeting be, anyway. It would be a late meeting anyway. So, we'll go to uh, November. All right. Uh, anything else from the committee members? So, that would be November the 9th, I've got written in. Is that correct? I believe, yes, it is November 9th. I can confirm that. In Sounds right though. We did have the 9th as the original date when we planned pre-COVID. So if we're sticking to the original schedule, then that was yes. the date. And I have that as my date as well. So yes, November 9th would be the next date. Okay. Okay, we have a motion here to adjourn this meeting. And I did, I am just. Sorry, go, go ahead, Lisa. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at the minutes um, to try to piece together who the vice chair was so I can answer that um, now if you'd like, or I can just follow up with an email. Oh, that's good. Okay, so the minutes from February, sorry. From previous meetings, um, Liz would be the vice chair for this year. I believe Pat was last year. Oh, okay. That was my understanding too. Okay, so this paper was probably printed off from last year. We wouldn't have had COVID last year. That's okay, we will fix it. No, it's okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, <clears throat> we're all set then for an adjournment. A mover and a seconder, please. Oh, can I just ask one question? There was, um, in, I think it was the July, I'm just trying to find it here, there was one put over, the guy was to come back with some information about um, a business that was going to be operating on the property. Has, has, that, has that come back? or? So, that? if I may answer that for you, Mr. Chair, we uh, reached out to the applicant and their agent. They did provide additional information, so the county has reviewed it and will be forwarding that to the local municipality for their uh, review and potential investigation before it comes back to land division because the, we like to give the local municipality the opportunity to update their comments based on any new information before we bring forward a recommendation to land division committee and we have notified the applicant and the benefiting property owner uh, that land division committee requested they both be in attendance so okay. um, potentially November meeting. Okay thanks. All right. Uh... An adjournment mover and seconder, please. I'll move it. All right. Whatever. <laughs>
<laughs> I'll third it. <laughs> that Liz for a second. Yeah. That's um, unanimous. <laughs> all right. Uh, how's our time? It's exactly 7.30. Well. Right. Kennedy second by Liz Danielson be resolved at the Land Division Committee meeting of September 14, 2020. Be hereby adjourned at 7.30 p.m. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, well, that concludes our meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thank Enjoy you your much. evening. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thanks, Thanks. Bye.